Everyone, we have an announcement to make. Yes, another worst to best video. Isn't that awesome, guys? I really love doing this. It's not like I'm running out of content or anything or because they always get some easy views. No, it's nothing like that. In this video, we're gonna rank... Every stationary weapon in Battlefield 1. Well, isn't that fantastic, you guys? You ask for it, I deliver. So without further ado, let's start the list off with the worst stationary weapon in Battlefield 1. And just to give a quick explanation on how I rank these, I'm looking at overall effectiveness, versatility, and the placements, but we'll get to that. So like I said, the worst stationary weapon in Battlefield 1 is 100% the Livens Projector, or as the Germans call it, the Gaswurfminen. These things are basically gas grenades waiting to be fired at a fixed location. The Livens Projector can only be found in the three maps from the Apocalypse DLC. And as you can see by the background footage, they are always in the same position. You can't aim with them. The only thing you can do is fire them and hoping for the best. Now the reason why I rank the Livens Projector as the worst stationary weapon in Battlefield 1, I think it's pretty obvious but I'm gonna explain it anyway, is because it's only effective when a miracle happens. So enemies need to be at the exact same location of where the gas shells are gonna land. Like I said, you can't aim with them a little bit to the left or the right. You can only fire it once and then you need to wait an eternity for them to reload and fire again. And because they fire gas grenades, they also don't kill on impact most of the time. So when by some miracle you do happen to get some hit markers, the enemy can just put on a gas mask and they are safe. I can honestly tell you guys, I've tried to get a kill with the Livens Projector for hours and hours on end just to get some background footage but it was impossible. Also, really quick before we continue with the next stationary weapon on the list, I didn't rank the HE Auto Cannon. This is the same cannon that you fire from the back of the bomber plane and from the behemoth airship. The HE Auto Cannon is only a stationary weapon on one map, Giant Shadow. And the reason why it's a stationary weapon there is because it's part of the airship that crashed. So I didn't really see a point in ranking it. If I were to rank it, I would probably rank it near the bottom. Anyway, next up on the list is the 305 52 Coastal Gun. You would expect this massive, massive gun to be amazing, right? I thought so too. Well, it's not. It's complete garbage. There are only two maps in the entire game where you can find this Coastal Gun. Those maps are Cape Hells from the Turning Tides DLC and Albion from the Russian DLC in the name of the Tsar. As it was the case with the Livens Projector, it took a really, really long time before I had any kills to record. So that alone should tell you something about how ineffective this thing really is. So I did finally manage to get a triple kill when I destroyed the Dreadnought on the Cape Hells map, but even that wasn't without any trouble. You see, because the Coastal Gun is such a huge gun, it's very easy to target from long range. The only reason why I got it to work was because I equipped the repair tool to repair it constantly when it was destroyed by enemy artillery. Another thing that really sucks about the coastal gun is the turn radius. I get that it's a coastal gun and that it targets things into the sea and on the coast, but that makes it very limited in terms of its use. On the Cape Hells map you can pretty much only fire into the ocean and with a lot of luck you can get a lucky kill on land. Its firing rate is also extremely slow, so follow up shots are not really a thing with a coastal gun. Up next is yet another stationary weapon that was introduced with a DLC. It's the Siege Cannon, or as it's fully named, BL 9.2 Siege Gun. The Siege Gun was introduced with the French DLC, They Shall Not Pass, and was initially present on the maps Verdun Heights and Rupture. When the final Apocalypse DLC came out, it was also added to the map Caporetto. Now, the Siege Gun is kinda interesting. On paper, it should be pretty good. It's always placed in a pretty isolated location, and its range is pretty insane. But there are three things that I really dislike about the Siege Gun. Firstly, it's firing rate. Like the Coastal Gun, the reload time, so the time it takes to fire another round, is yet again extremely slow. 12 seconds to be precise. Another thing that really reduces the overall effectiveness of the Siege Gun is the travel time. As you can see by the footage in the background, it takes a really long time before your shell hits the ground. The cool thing though about the Siege Gun is that it has three different shells to fire. It has a high explosive shell, a gas canister shell and a smoke grenade shell. So because you have those three different types of ammunition, you can actually play it pretty tactically. For example, if you want to cut off an enemy route, you can fire a gas grenade there, or if you want to help your team push up, you can fire a smoke grenade. You need to use it very wisely though, because once you fired it, you can fire another shell for 12 whole seconds. 
The last thing that makes the siege gun not that effective is its splash damage. You really need to hit your enemies dead on, otherwise you won't do a full 100 damage. And like I said, because of its firing rate, follow up shots are not possible, which is not the case with a regular Mora for example. The next stationary weapon on the list is the Fortress Gun. The Fortress Gun is yet again only to be found on 3 multiplayer maps. 2 vanilla maps which are Empire's Edge and Monte Grappa, and on the map Heligoland Bite from the Turning Tides DLC. The reason why I rank the Fortress Gun pretty high up the list is because of multiple reasons. Firstly, unlike the other stationary weapons, it fires two shells at the same time, which increases the kill zone and therefore its overall effectiveness. Secondly, its reload speed is actually not that bad, especially when you compare it to the Siege Gun for example. The splash damage from the Fortress Gun is also pretty damn amazing, you'll see plenty of kills in the background footage because of that. Another good reason why I really like the Fortress Gun is because of the protection it offers to the operator. You see the Fortress Gun is located inside a bunker, so you are completely protected from outside fire. The Fortress Gun can be destroyed from the outside, but you can repair it very easily from the inside. So unless an enemy is coming inside the bunker, you can stay alive indefinitely and farm some easy kills. One more thing to point out about the Fortress Gun is that depending on the map, the Fortress Gun is either completely useless or pretty insane. For example on the map Empire's Edge, there is a Fortress Gun located to the west. This Fortress Gun can pretty much only be aimed towards the ocean, which renders it pretty useless. On Heligoland Bight it's the same story, though because the map is so heavily naval orientated, you can actually get some nice kills. But the Fortress Gun is the most effective on the map Monte Grappa. Even though I hate that map, with the Fortress Gun you can have some pretty insane kills. Especially on operations when you are the defending team. So for those reasons, I rank the Fortress Gun like this. Nani? Next up on the list is the Coastal Cannon, not to be confused with the Coastal Gun. This stationary weapon can only be found on the map Zeebrugge from the Turning Tides DLC. And because of that reason alone I actually wanted to rank it much lower. But after careful consideration I actually think it deserves this spot on the list. The SK-45 Coastal Cannon is actually pretty damn good. It has a fast rate of fire, the projectile's travel speed is also pretty fast, it does decent damage with good splash damage, it has great range and it comes with a zoom function for extra precision. There are 4 different coastal cannons on the Zeebrugge map, 2 near the A flag and 2 alongside the harbor which is great to take out incoming torpedo boats. And since this map is so focused on naval warfare, there will be plenty of boats to destroy. It can also be used to target distant infantry and L-class destroyers as well as C-class airships up in the sky. But because of its limited presence on other maps and because you don't really have any protection when using the coastal cannon, I can't rank it higher than this. So now we finally enter the top 3 and an interesting thing to note here is that the top 3 are all stationary weapons from the vanilla game. So next up on the list which is the number 3 spot on the list is the stationary heavy machine gun. This stationary weapon can be found on pretty much every map in the game and most likely there are multiple locations on those maps as well. You have two types of stationary machine guns, one with a protective shield and one without. The pros and cons of having a shield is pretty obvious. The shield protects you from small arm fire but limits your view pretty drastically. It also doesn't cover your entire silhouette so you can still get shot. Not having a shield leaves you very vulnerable and you can pretty much count on it to be shot in the face by a sniper. Now there are some machine gun nests on certain maps that have a great position. So you can get plenty of kills, though the machine gun has two major drawbacks in my opinion. One, it suffers greatly from the random bullet deviation mechanic in Battlefield 1, so it's very inaccurate. And two, maybe this is just me on console, but I find that these stationary machine guns have a very awkward handling to them. Like I wish they could be aimed with the same sensitivity as your regular soldier. The machine guns are also pretty effective against airships. Next up on the list, so the second highest ranked stationary weapon in Battlefield 1 is the stationary AA cannon. I think most of you would agree with me that the AA cannons are often very important in winning a game where there are multiple enemy planes. These AA cannons can be found on pretty much every map that has aerial vehicles and are obviously extremely effective in taking out planes. They are very easy to use and can even be effective against enemy infantry. One downside is that pretty much all ace pilots know exactly all locations of these AA cannons and you'll find that they often go to destroy these AA cannons first. But there is no denying in the fact that the AA cannons are very very important in winning close games. And now for the number one spot on the list, the best stationary weapon in Battlefield 1, 
the field cannon. The field cannon is amazing for a number of reasons. Firstly, field cannons can be found on a lot of maps. They often have great positioning. They can be turned 360 degrees so you are not forced to fire in a single direction. The reload speed is very fast. The shell's velocity is also very, very fast. It has insane damage and splash damage, so it can be used against enemy armor as well as enemy infantry. And it has a protective shield which holds at least one full on hitting tank shell. Honestly there are not too many bad things I can say about the field cannon, other than the fact that it's a stationary weapon. Which is obvious since the whole video is about ranking stationary weapons. So there you have it guys, all stationary weapons in Battlefield 1 rank from worst to best. Do you agree with the list or do you not agree? Let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Subscribe with notifications on if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I see you guys next time.